In this video, which is based on this blog post, I'll address some of the common questions and concerns about Sphinx's real-time indexes. So let's get started. First of all, real-time indexes should be declared in the Sphinx configuration, just as the other index types. But there are a couple important differences you should remember. One, data sources are not required, and two, you should explicitly enumerate all the text fields, not just the attributes. Here's an example. Notice the two full text fields and a unsigned integer attribute. So a real-time index is split into two parts, one that always stays in memory, receiving new content, and a second that stays on disk, which is very similar to a plain index in structure. All new data goes to the RAM chunk. The size of this chunk is controlled by the RT mem limit configuration option. When this limit is reached, the RAM chunk is flushed to a disk chunk and the process repeats. A disk chunk is just like a plain index. The dictionary and attributes will be loaded in memory. After flushing, the RAM chunk is empty and can again be filled, filled with data. An important thing to understand about the memory usage of a real-time index is that the memory used by disk chunks is not limited in any way by the RT mem limit directive. The RT mem limit option sets the size of the RAM chunk. To calculate the requirements of your real-time index, consider the maximum size of the real-time chunk plus the memory that will be used by disk chunks. As we insert more data, more disk chunks will be created. Searching a real-time index is similar to a single core search on multiple plain indexes. As of this moment, the RT index will only use one core per search, no matter how many disk chunks it has. And this may change in the future. This means the Sphinx daemon will need to hit more files on disk than in a normal plain index, which means more I.O. SearchD then needs to merge all results from all the chunks, which translates, in the end, to lower search speeds. And this is RT index fragmentation. The value of RT mem limit and the size of your data set will determine how many disk chunks are created. When the index becomes highly fragmented across many disk chunks, performance suffers. To make this clear, we perform some tests. We used a data set with 11 million documents consisting of document ID, three full text fields, title description tags, and 10 numeric attributes. The title field was also stored as a string attribute. Using default settings, dictionary equals keywords and min word length equals one, and the latest chunk version, the plain index was around 9.6 gigabytes in size. We compared the performance of this plain index to real-time indexes with different RT mem limit values using the same data. We considered three cases, a cold search, where index files were not buffered in RAM by the operating system, a half-cached case, where MySQL was also running, so it was possible to buffer only around half the disk files, and a fully cached case, we force the buffering of the files in RAM. You'll notice that with the default RT mem limit, which is 128 megabytes, the real-time index created 81 chunks on disk. The search performance on an index like this is pretty bad, especially when it's necessary to hit the disk a lot, and we used an SSD. Then. Changing RT mem limit to 512 megabytes, the index created 23 disk chunks. The performance improved, but was still quite bad when it had to hit the disk a lot. With an RT mem limit of 1024 megabytes, only 11 disk chunks were created, and performance started to go up, even in the worst cases. When all files were buffered in RAM, we got similar results to a real-time index with real-time memory limit of 
2048 megabytes with now just five disk chunks. Eliminating the I.O. problem isn't everything because SearchD still needs to go through several chunks and merge the results. CPU can also be a bottleneck. So, real-time indexes lag behind the search speed of a plain index, which consists of a single piece. To bring real-time index performance close to plain index performance, we need to optimize. The optimization merges all the disk chunks into one, so it is pretty I.O. intensive as it needs to read all data from a disk chunk, create a temporary chunk which isn't searchable, and then merge the next chunk into it. After that, the temporary chunk is brought in and the chunks that have been merged are deleted. Right now, the optimization process is single-threaded, so you need to consider having a free CPU core for it. But the biggest problem can be the I.O. impact, which can be throttled with RT merge IOPS and RT merge max IO size. But let's imagine we have two chunks, a really big RAM chunk and a disk chunk. And in some cases, searches will need to merge results from both. As we mentioned earlier, merging is IO intensive. So to get around this potential hangup, we can force the RAM chunk to flush with the flush RAM chunk command. This command creates a new disk chunk. After flushing the RAM chunk, we rerun the optimize command to get all data in a single place, and the RT index will now perform as well as, or almost as well as a plain index. Since real-time indexes are updated incrementally, indexing with them will be slower than with a plain index, considering we do single-threaded indexing. The best way to populate a real-time index with initial data is to first index with a plain index and then transform it into a real-time index with the attach command. But what is the inserting speed in a real-time index and what's the best way to insert a lot of data at once? Batch inserts in the real-time index can be made in three ways. You can do a normal insert with auto commit, which is the default. You can disable auto commit, run inserts with one document, and commit at 10, 100, 1000 inserts, or etc. Or you can insert with multiple documents in one insert statement. The fastest method is the multiple document insert. How many docs to put in a single insert? In our case, it was between a hundred and a thousand. Going beyond this, we observed that the insert rate decreased. This chart illustrates the indexing rate for plain indexes and for RT indexes using different insert methods. The test included only a batch of a hundred thousand documents, small enough to not trigger a RAM chunk flush. Since there was no flushing, and no disk I.O., the speed can only be influenced by the CPU core power. Batch inserting speed with RT indexes will be, in the best case, somewhere around half the indexing rate of a plain index. However, in the real world, this will be even lower. There are two reasons for this. First, a new document is merged into the data already present in the RAM chunk. The bigger the RAM chunk, the slower the merge. Second, as the RAM chunk size increases, it will take more time to flush to disk. The CPU plays a major role here, even in the case of flushing. The culprit in the case of flushing is that the RAM chunk doesn't have the same structure as a disk chunk, and therefore, it has to be transformed. Also. I.O. can influence flushing in cases that include storage with low I.O. So, in short, the inserting rate will decrease slowly as RT mem limit gets bigger. But real-time indexes do have an advantage over plain indexes. Plain indexes use a single-threaded operation. That means we can't speed it up unless we split it. 
With RT indexes, nothing stops us from using more than one insert script. In this example, we use two scripts, each inserting one half of the data. While the speed of each thread dropped a bit, the total time needed to insert all data was only 30 to 35% bigger than the plain index and almost half the time compared to using only one insert script. And in the newer versions of Sphinx, a buffer was introduced that can take incoming inserts while flushing is in process. However, you can still get insert stalls if you add a lot of data. If the RAM chunk is big enough, like 2 gigabytes or more, it's possible to fill the insert buffer, which is now hard-coded at 10% of the real-time memory limit. And inserts will have to wait until the RAM chunk is flushed. So you need to consider in these particular cases that RAM flushing can take even more than one minute depending on CPU core or disk performance. And be sure the scripts that do the inserts will not time out. So here are some conclusions. Don't use the default real-time memory limit unless you have a small set of data. The real-time index will perform well enough even with 10 disk chunks, but it would need to be optimized from time to time. The value of RT mem limit and how often you should run optimize changes from case to case. The best way to determine this would be to observe how much data is inserted within a certain window of time and make a rough estimate of the RAM chunk size and frequency of optimizing. Performance will be even better if RAM is available to allow the operating system to cache the disk files. The performance drops to low levels as the number of chunks increases and will become worse if RAM is not available to allow the OS to cache disk files. And finally, indexing speed will typically be at almost 40% of the plain indexing capability on single thread, but you can add data in parallel and get reasonable indexing times. So, thanks for listening and happy sphinxing. Bye-bye.